My name's Peter Davis. Um, I was actually born in Rhodesia, so I, I have quite a strong connection with the country. I don't live there anymore. I left oh, in 1975, a long time ago, before it even changed its name to Zimbabwe. All the farmers, the farm labourers, all had the most amazing lives. They were able to grow their own vegetables. They, had, they wanted for nothing. They were given housing. They were given schooling for their children. They had clinics on the farms. They had everything. And we lived way out in the bush in Rhodesia. Absolutely idyllic now that I look back on it. I didn't actually enjoy it too much as a little boy. I wanted to be in the city or the town or somewhere, but um, uh, I remember one morning waking up and uh, my mother was very distressed because through, during the night uh, a small herd of elephants had come right through our garden and uh, trampled all over her flower beds, you know, right in front of the house there. I hadn't heard them at all that night. My dad was on the copper mines and it was, it was a bit of a, um, how can you describe the existence? You would, you would always be moving, you'd always be living in mine accommodation. So nobody owned their own house or anything, but you could move from mine to mine, town to town. And we were staying on a, uh, at a farm uh, up near the Marodona Mountains in 72. And the next door farm while we were there was the very first farm to get rocketed. Nothing being grown in the country anymore. So whatever is in the shops at the moment, a lot of it is imported at great cost the duty is high. So we're, that cost is all being passed on to us. So we're afford, able to afford less and less these days. Um, beef prices have shot up. Pork prices have just gone up by 500%, which has made an enormous difference. So we just don't buy pork anymore. Uh, on my passing art parade for the army after my training, my passing art present was actually a one-way ticket out of the country, which I thought was very good. But I thought to myself, well, if I don't do, if I don't finish this, if I don't finish this army thing, I'll never finish anything in my life. So I kept the ticket and I finished the army, it took 18 months, and I still had the ticket. And that's when my mother said, look, you take the ticket and you go. And at that, you know, that time it was a bit, um, yeah, I think it did my head in quite a bit, you know, especially some of the stuff that, we'd gone through in the army and then having to leave the country and then going to strange cultures. Um, a lot of people think that uh, because I'm a white African, which is what I am, that, uh, that we were always at loggerheads with the black Africans, where well, we weren't. Um, uh, my only company as a small boy were black children. Uh, so I learned to speak the African language of that particular area uh, probably, as a small boy, better than I spoke English. Um, a lot of things are breaking down and there's no money in the country to fix them. The power problem is basically a lack of money, a lack of foreign currency to bring the right spares in to fix everything. The same with the water, the pumps at the main water supply are breaking down and they haven't got the money to fix them. Um, as far as Zimbabwe goes, I think they really, um, I don't think I would want to go back. Um, it's going to take such a long time for it to, from what I can gather, for it to actually get back to anything like it was. Anybody who's left even a few years or 20 odd years, they still love the country as it was, but they wouldn't love it now. And I'm probably the only one that knows what it's like now. So. We've reached the stage now where we don't want to leave our country, but we're being forced to.